Some of you guys asked questions on my community post that I posted last week, and I'm going to be going over some of those questions in today's weekly video, and that's going to be this week's weekly video. So I gave preference to my members for this one first, and I had one question asked by Gregory, and that was basically, do reference files inside of Tortoise TTS make a big difference? And they do, in fact, make a large difference. So here I have Tortoise TTS opened up, and I've got the uh, voices folder right here, and I've got one single audio file inside of here. So what we're going to do is click generate and it's going to generate a new sentence. But you'll also notice that inside of here, you'll get a conditioning latents PTH file. And so each audio file is used to create this conditioning latents PTH file. So that kind of steers the way the voice is going to sound. So I have the seed here at 10, meaning it's going to be the same generation no matter how many times I click generate here. And what I'm going to do now is change the reference file and then we'll compare to the two. So let me download this one. All right. So I saved that as Mel test one. And now what I'm going to do is delete this conditioning latents, take this one out, paste it here, and then just add in a different audio file and then generate with this. So nothing's changed here except for that reference file. And we're going to notice that it's going to be huge difference between the two. So let me save this as a uh, Mel test two. And so let's listen to these reference files real quick. So here is how the first reference file sounds for which I live. Burn. And then we'll take a listen to the second reference file that I used, which is here. Please. The Lord of Frenzied Flame is no Lord at all. All right, so both are Melina from Elden Ring, but one is way different than the other. And so now let's go ahead and listen to the final output. That first reference file is Mel Test 1, and the second one is Mel Test 2. So here we go. Changing the reference audio file does, in fact, make a huge difference. Changing the reference audio file does, in fact, make a huge difference. So there you go. Changing the reference file does, in fact, make a huge difference. So just be aware of that. If you want to try to keep the reference audio the same between different training sessions, you definitely can. Um, and yeah, you can even use other voices. So yeah, that's something to experiment with already. And I did end up asking the question to the general channel as a whole to gather some more questions. And I'll be going through some of these ones real quick. So so this question is asking about um, some issues on the AI voice cloning repository. Um, it looks like you're having UTF uh, eight and codec isn't able to decode a specific byte. Um, this might have to do with a, a character inside of um, maybe your train file that isn't able to be decoded by UTF-8. So it could be some type of special symbol or special character that is causing this. Um, I don't know exactly how to find it, unfortunately, but um, you might be able to get away with starting over and using maybe a couple of audio files instead to test to make sure training does work first and then slowly adding more data um, back to the training session. So what I mean by that is when you're training the model inside of a uh, tortoise CTS, uh, for example, let's say that um, you put in a large file into uh, voices here, you did the transcription process and inside of training, uh, you now have um, some data like this. So audio train text validation. I think some of the characters inside of here that got transcribed might not be UTF-8, and so it's causing issues. So what you can do is uh, go into, let's say, like the audio folder here. Just take a single small example uh, from that split data set and then go back into uh, voices um, and choose whatever training voice that you're going to be using. Delete the large file that was in there beforehand, paste that small sample, and then try running a training um, session with just a single audio file to see if training actually works on your machine. Usually this is part of the process that I do for debugging um, to reduce the amount of variables that I have to look at to find the error. And so you can do that and see if you're able to train and if so you can add more data. And then a, additionally for your question, um, the GitHub issues, I have been very inactive on my AI voice cloning uh, issues page. I've been working on some other things, so haven't been able to go there. And well, there's a lot in there right now, so won't be able to do that in this video. But I do hope that I'd be able to do like a live stream where I go over some of the issues there. 
So maybe I could answer some of your questions live, but that'll be something for the future. The next question by Adam is asking, uh, what do I mean that style TTS is less expressive than tortoise? Um, I don't know if I quite follow on the rest of the um, question here. So sorry about that. But I think what you're trying to guess at is does can these models sound more expressive and so what i mean by style tts being less expressive than tortoise is that the way that it speaks is less expressive in terms of like emphasis and pausing at specific points uh, when you're speaking so here i have tortoise and then here i have style tts so i'm gonna play tortoise and then i'm gonna play style tts and so these are using the same reference files and they were trained on the same data and so they should be you know pretty similar in terms of data sets but the only thing that is different between the two is the architecture so let's take a listen to tortoise changing the reference audio file does in fact make a huge difference all right and then let's take a listen to style tts changing the reference audio file does in fact make a huge difference so style tts isn't able to pick up as much on that reference file and it also sounds very similar to how melina usually speaks and so you aren't able to get as much of that expression inside of style tts as you are in tortoise However, Style TTS is much faster and it does, I'd say, 80% of the job. So if you're looking for something that is faster, Style TTS is great. Um, it does have good expression on some of the voices and is able to copy a lot of voices, but it's just not as high quality as like Tortoise TTS or XTTS. And then as for new languages in Style TTS, um, multilingual training I haven't quite done yet, but I've heard that you can do as little as 20 hours of high quality data and that's what uh, a guy in the style TTS uh, discord did for, for Japanese and the model actually came out pretty well. All right, the next question is um, if I can make a video on hyperparameters and data sets. So hyperparameters is a, uh, a huge topic for discussion and cannot be answered in a simple Q&A video. Uh, maybe if you had a question about a specific hyperparameter, I might be able to go over that. But as for data set, um, in terms of UVR, I'll actually pull up what I use in UVR. So here we are inside of UVR. Um, I usually use MDX net with 2040, uh, 2048 segment size and an overlap of 12 vocals only and GPU conversion. I use this instant VOC HQ model, which um, isn't installed by default on UVR, but you can go to this little wrench here, go to download center, MDX net, find it in here and download it. And so that's what I like to use. I think it's the best one on UVR, but, or it's the best one that I've tested so far on UVR. And then if I need to do additional um, processing, like let's say de reverbing, I'll use VR architecture and use this UVR de echo de reverb model. So I think that one's decent. And um, this, these are the settings that I use here. So as for the sample rate, etc., I don't really modify any of that um, after UVR because the data set splitting scripts, they all handle that on their own. For Tortoise, it splits it to um, 22050 hertz, which is what uh, Tortoise was originally trained on. And then for Style TTS, I have it to 24K hertz. Now, if you're training some other type of model, you can definitely change this on your own. But if you uh, do that for the um, like web UIs that I've created so far, um, unfortunately, all of your hard work will be um, modified by FFmpeg because that's all automated already in the script. And then a video about hyperparameters, that could be huge. Um, there are a lot of hyperparameters that maybe I could go over. So if you have any in specific about Tortoise TTS or Style TTS, um, please leave a comment for that. And um, I might make a video uh, following up on that as well. All right, Agentic Mark asks, why not just create a CLI version, a command line interface instead of mucking with Gradio? And that is because me personally, I prefer web UIs. I prefer graphical user interfaces. And I think a majority of the audience also does prefer graphical user interfaces. Now it does, um, in fact, make it a little bit harder to pull out certain functions that you might need uh, to operate maybe in like a 
uh, command line or terminal setting. However, I find that is not a majority of the case and Gradio is a little bit easier to uh, visualize and work with things. I can just make a simple button and that button is going to call all the functions that I need. Really, I think this all just comes out to personal preference and um, my personal preference is having a UI that I can use and play around with. As for Koki's um, poisoning of XTTS. I have heard rumors of this, but I haven't actually trained XTTS extensively myself, so don't have much of a comment on this. XTTS is in fact really good. XTTS plus RVC I think is probably the best pipeline um, outside of Tortoise TTS and RVC. They're basically the same model architectures as far as I know, but XTTS has um, better training data and is multilingual in its um, training data. So. The only reason that I don't really use XTTS is because of how it was licensed. But now that Koki TTS has gone out of business, maybe there's something that has changed on that side of things. But yeah, next question. How can I train a model with a new database without corrupting the model? Why Tortoise TTS and not Koki or others? Um, I think Tortoise, I think I just kind of answered this, but Koki kind of had that um, non-commercial license with it. I know a lot of people didn't want to mess around with that. Um, so Tortoise TTS being the next best option is one that I focused on and got most of my experience in. So I'm just more comfortable with Tortoise TTS. So mainly personal preference. And then I me I'm assuming you mean a data set. You should be able to just train with any data set um, without corrupting the model. Um, I might need more clarification on what you mean by corrupting the model. But if you just change the data set um, and make sure that whatever data you're using is being transcribed correctly by Whisper, you should be able to get a good sounding model out of it. How to add pronunciation checker for individual words like we use an SAPI 5. Unfortunately, I am not too sure on how to do this. Um, I'm not too aware of what the pronunciation checker might be. But as far as I know, Tortoise TTS doesn't have this granular ability to um, to do this. Uh, maybe there is a model that could be added on after that will uh, check for pronunciation and regenerate a sample. But you don't have an in place modifier to where you can modify specific parts of the TTS set output. Now, I do think something kind of like this is already inside of Tortoise TTS, which is the CLVP model, which basically ranks the samples that are outputted of Tortoise TTS and gives you the best one outputted. But that's not necessarily a pronunciation checker. So this is something I'd have to look more into. I'm not too sure exactly on um, what that is. And uh, yeah, is there any way to contact me? Well, yes, you can go to my Discord. You can contact me there uh, or my email if there's any business inquiries. However, um, it's as I am available. And uh, sometimes, you know, I have a life outside of YouTube and coding. So um, I may not always be as active as people may want me to be. So please understand that as well. And then for training um, musical instruments inside of RVC, um, sometimes it seems human and not the timber of the musical instrument. I believe this might just be a uh, simple limitation of maybe how RVC's base model was trained. From my understanding, RVC's base model was trained with a, uh, a lot of singers and not a lot of instruments. And so the model might just be finding it hard to generalize to the instrument in order to provide an accurate output of the instrument that you're trying to train on. I only trained on two instruments or I've only trained on two instruments so far, that being guitar and then piano. The piano one, I just threw in a bunch of data from um, piano from YouTube and it came out kind of interesting, uh, not the best. I'd have to look more into this um, as I haven't really done too much in this area uh, other than the couple of things I tried in the beginning. Alrighty, so those are my answers to those questions um, for this week. And if you guys like this type of video, uh, if you like me answering your guys' questions, um, feel free to comment down below on um, yes, and I'll start doing more community posts where I answer your guys' questions like this in this format. Um, and if there's anything lacking in these answers, feel free to ask clarifying questions. Um, like I said, some of these things I don't have the intimate knowledge on exactly on how you might implement them. So that might make for an interesting uh, follow up video, maybe uh, checking that that topic out. Yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Very much appreciate you guys interacting with me and um, I will see you guys later.